I need to manage everyone's expectations. I have been told that uh, this lecture is sort of like an MBA curriculum done in uh, an hour and 15 minutes. So put on your, your seat belts. We're going to cover a lot of material. Who will benefit from this presentation? I state managers who have previously failed at promoting or implementing enterprise performance management and business analytics into their decision support systems, and also managers who intend to champion any or all improvement techniques and need a compelling call to action. And the reason I put champions in quotes is because it's just been my observation that although it's really preferred to have senior executive sponsorship for programs, all too often it's not present. They're either distracted with firefighting at the top or sometimes internal office politics, and it tends to be champions, people with fire in the belly and a passion that actually are the ones that basically promote uh, improvement programs. Now, I do want to start with a belief statement. Uh, my belief is that various methodologies that comprise the enterprise performance management portfolio, and we'll cover a, a variety of them, balanced scorecards, KPIs, profitability analysis of customers, rolling financial forecasts, and the like, they are logical, and they're not really as complicated as many people perceive. But what's really slowing down the rate of the adoption of these is actually organizational behavior. It is no longer technology that it once was a few years ago. And so really the purpose of this presentation, the reason I called it speed bumps, um, is it's really time to really elevate change management to the discussion. Unfortunately, most of us are trained as uh, specialists and we're technical and we didn't really get schooled in psychology or sociology, but it's going to be relevant. Now, I'm not sure these slides have anything to do with the presentation, but I want to <laughs> share them anyway. What is the lifespan of big companies? Of the Forbes 100, which was created in 1917, how many do you think were still on that list in 2006? The answer, only 18, and only 39 of the 100 have survived. Of the Standard & Poor's 500 list created in 1957, how many do you think were on the list in 2006? The answer, only 74, just 15%. And only 12 of those 74 have outperformed the index. And so I ask, what do we conclude from these? And my speculation is when an organization is successful, it just breeds adversity to risk. And each new day is a new day. It's a volatile and dynamic set of uh, issues, economy taking place. We basically have to look forward. And then here's another sort of provocative question. How consistently profitable are companies? A McKinsey study showed that between 1998 and 2007, 460 of the companies in the S&P 500 reported at least one annual loss. And I actually do have a hidden agenda for these slides. As you'll see when we get near the end, I think resistance to change is really substantial. It's human nature. People like the status quo. And you have to create some discomfort, especially in executives, um, in order to basically overcome resistance to change. And so I'm going to basically go through the list of four technical barriers. This is sort of the tell you what I'm going to tell you, then tell you it, and at the end, you know, tell you what I told you. The first the barrier that's been slowing it has been technical barriers. You know, these are IT-related, such as dirty data, disparate databases, uh, sources, and the like, although many of those are solvable with technology. A second barrier is these perception barriers of excess complexity and affordability that, oh, it's way too complicated to, you know, implement a balanced scorecard and measure KPIs or measure customer profitability using activity-based costing principles and the like. But those can be overcome. A third barrier is what I call design deficiencies, including poor measurements or their calculations or weak models and assumptions. Often this has to do with lack of experience or perhaps you even bring in a consulting firm, but they bring in a junior consultant who is doing it for their first time. But candidly, these three are, I think, solvable. The real big hitter is the fourth one. It is these organizational barriers involving resistance to change, culture, leaders, lack of leadership or weak leadership, fear of knowing the truth, not wanting to be held accountable, not wanting to be measured, and so forth. And we'll have to address these as I go through my presentation. But let me begin by telling you a story, a lesson in my career. When I was a junior, um, I went to Cornell and I was studying in OR and industrial engineering. I wanted to optimize the world, and I got a summer job at the Chicago Transit Authority. I'm a Chicago native. 
And um, I got put in the first day into the research and development department. I, oh, now I can really optimize the schedules of the buses and the CTA trains. And what I discovered on the first day was the R&D department was actually a dumping ground for bus drivers with heart attacks or ailments. And it was really discouraging and depressing, quite frankly. And I tell people I wish I was 25 years old now, today, because so many of the issues I faced then at the CTA have been solved. There's, uh, there's the technology. There's the source of data. There's managers who now have a better sense of problems. The margin for error is slimmer. And I will come back to this at the end of my presentation. So my agenda is I'm going to first try to clarify the confusion and lack of consensus about what enterprise performance management is. I will then do similarly for business analytics, of which there's lack of consensus. I'll repeat the four barriers, and then really it goes to really the meat of this presentation. I'm going to talk about obstacles and impediments and also explain some of the methodologies for measurements, for management accounting, for customer value management, for budgeting, and what the root causes for all these barriers are then give some prescriptive uh, suggestions how to overcome the barriers and conclude with sort of my big picture is what does enterprise performance management look like. So let's start with this confusion and lack of consensus about performance management. Is it human resources performance management? Well, it is. However, it's actually enterprise performance management. If you actually Google performance management, 90% of the hits are going to be HR personnel, employee appraisal and the like. But that's certainly necessary employees, but we're talking about the organization as a whole. Is it scorecards, dashboards, KPIs, and measures? Yes, but that's really just the feedback mechanism. Is it the alignment, such as strategic and resource allocation? Yes, because we want to align employee behavior um, and priorities and projects with the strategy of the executive team. Is it process, productivity, and quality improvement? Yes, however, that's business process management, which is, which is a subset of performance management. And this is the world of Lean and Six Sigma and the like. And is it all of the above and even more? I believe when I'm done, you'll see it is a much broader umbrella. So let's try to clarify. Well, the good news is this. Enterprise performance management is not a new methodology that everyone now has to learn, but rather it is the integration of existing methodologies that people are already familiar with. I already gave some examples like scorecards and profitability analysis. The problem is most organizations implement these methodologies in a sequence or in isolation of each other. It's almost as if the project teams are in parallel universes. And you get a lot more power and synergy when you integrate these methodologies together and even more so when you basically embed in each of the analytics, each of the methodologies, analytics of all flavors like segmentation analysis, correlation analysis, regression. And I know some of you said, oh, I don't want to hear about statistics. I took that course. I was happy to get a D and get out of there. But analytics is increasingly becoming critical. So in sum, Performance management has been around these methodologies for decades, arguably even before computers. And in a minute, I'll talk about what basically has caused interest in it. So just to be sure I have a slide that gives the definition, it's the integration of multiple methodologies with each one embedded with analytics, such as segmentation analysis, but especially predictive analytics. And the reason I stress that is because I think most executive teams are shifting away from a command and control style of, you know, after the fact reacting to problems to much more anticipatory planning where the future volume mix is coming at you and you're solving big problems before they become, um, uh, or small problems before they become big problems and adjusting headcount, spend, and the like in advance. And its primary purpose is